Now we introduce to you our in-studio guest, Christina Barba, president and founder of The Culture Project. Welcome to our live coverage, Christina. Thank you for having me back. It's great to be with you both today. It's so great to speak with you. So for our viewers who haven't met you yet, who haven't heard of your work, tell us about The Culture Project. Well, I would be delighted to. So The Culture Project is a lay movement of young adult Catholics that give a year or two of their life to work to build a culture of life. And the message of fighting for the rights of the preborn is a huge huge part of what we do and this is a big a big day for us naturally um, and so basically we believe that by building a culture of virtue a culture of respect we will build up a culture of life and we really want to make abortion unthinkable so we spend a lot of time focused on education of our youth middle school high school students young adults college students and we also speak with parents and we really speak about virtue about the dignity of the human person that every person is unique and irreplaceable and unrepeatable and has a unique mission. So we focus a lot about the dignity of the person and protecting life of the unborn, of the preborn, but also how do we build a culture and a society where we're not even stuck in the situation thinking about crisis, right? So we speak about chastity, the virtue of chastity, and understanding and integrating our sexuality to mm -hmm. a point that we're free, we're mm -hmm. alive, by embracing a life of chastity, which we know is for everybody, it helps us to hear God's voice and a call in our hearts. And many of our young men and women actually have discerned, our missionaries discerned religious life and are able to answer that call um, through the time of prayer that they have in formation. And we have also a lot of beautiful families and marriages that come from this mission as well. But the, the main ministry is our missionaries, young adult missionaries, living in community, living a prayer life and going out and spreading the joy that they have found in living a life of virtue with young people across the country. Oh, that's that's very good. And with the um, the formation, I would assume, obviously, as you mentioned, that time of community is very important, the time of praying together. But also, you really said at the beginning, too, education. You go out and educate others, mm -hmm. but also, um, could you talk a little bit about the formation of the missionaries themselves? Oh, I'd love to. This is one of my favorite <laughs> things. Uh, we, we have a very... Uh, very, very robust formation program for our mm -hmm. missionaries. So they spend at least eight weeks all together, living together in community praying. We begin our time actually at St. Vincent Arch Abbey, a Benedictine monastery in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. And um, the monks there have been spiritual fathers to the Culture Project, but also to many of us individually. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of have a two week spiritual boot camp and we spend it praying with the monks. So we're on college student schedule and monk schedule. So. Everyone's a little sleep deprived <laughs> at the end, but the monks allow us to join them for the office. And so we pray with them, have daily mass, holy hours, and they give us presentations on human formation, human formation, spiritual formation. So we work on knowing ourselves better and then learning to pray and how to listen. And so that's the first part of our training. Then they learn how to fundraise. And then we spend six weeks in Long Island at the Seminary of the Immaculate Conception. And there it is just intense educational formation. So we bring in actually some of your, your guests, I'm sure, from today, wonderful yeah. Stephanie Gray, many yeah. people like that. So leaders in different fields in the pro-life movement come and, and teach our missionaries for a couple days at a time. A beautiful witness of modern day missionaries, and I cannot wait to continue to hear more of what you are up to. But and for this year's March, as we've said, the theme is life empowers, pro-life is pro-one. That is a truth that counters so many lies we often hear in our culture. I previously spoke with former fashion model turned Catholic speaker, Leah Darrow, about the lies we so often hear about women's bodies today and why we need to continue to speak truth and affirm life. You and I have both only lived in a post Roe v. Wade world where women are encouraged to say, my body, my choice. But how does that affect the way we as women view our bodies? Right. Well, I think, number one, it pits women against women, too. Hmm. It's my body, my, my choice. And so we want to completely sever the connection with the sexual act, with procreation, with hmm. the fact that like uh, it actually could produce another person. My hmm. body, my choice doesn't hold up because hmm. it's, there's another body in your body. And that's right. not your choice. And the choice that you made with your body, with another body, can produce hmm. another body. There's a 
lot of bodies there. Right. <laughs> but there's that idea. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hold up. There's mm -hmm. no proof that that is li liberating women. There's mm -hmm. no proof that actually helps women. And we see time and time again all the problems in our culture come back to this place of really forgetting once again who we are, what we've been made for, and how to act the way that we've been created. Christina, did you have any thoughts on what Leah just shared with us? Just want to say, amen. Um, yes. Her her words are just so so true. Um, I think we just often really really forget how powerful love is and mm -hmm. how powerful our sexuality is, mm -hmm. and it's just in, incredible the, the price that we're willing to pay. You know, is actually human blood to do what we want with our bodies, but on the counter the gift of our sexuality and the gift of our bodies is just so beautiful and it can mm -hmm. be so powerful when it's turned in the right direction. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I think if we understood a little bit more who we were, what we were made for, and that we were made for love, we wouldn't be as afraid to embrace those new lives mm -hmm. and see what beautiful, what beauty could come actually out of it. And I can't help you, when you were sharing about the work of the culture projects and what the missionaries are up to, I couldn't help but think, this is such a counter-cultural witness. Um, and it's difficult to speak the truth about chastity. It's difficult to speak about the truth of sexuality. Can you give us any insight into your work and how you go about doing that? Sure, well it is, yes, totally counter-cultural. There's a reason why we're named The Culture Project. <laughs> so we, right. we have a big, like a grand goal of kind of restoring this culture to, to right order, but we really think it's gonna happen through that personal commitment to virtue and really chastity in particular. Yeah. So yeah, it is an uphill battle and the world is just um, organized so differently. So what we really try to do is just to be normal, relatable young people that actually are living in the world. And that's our job. We're, we're lay Catholic missionaries. We're, we're, we are not, um, we're not religious and so we have a different role. So yeah. we really intentionally show the young people that we are living in the same world that they are. We are seeing the same things on social media that they are. We're hearing the same music, mm -hmm. the same songs. So we don't try to avoid what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. We actually want to plug in and then highlight themes in that yeah. and, and really share. So I think it gives us a lot of relatability and credibility. And, yeah. and I'm, not, I'm not the, I'm the old lady on the team, right? So our missionaries no. are these beautiful recent college grads that are also more plugged in and so mm -hmm. our missionaries don't give up their cell phones to join their mission they, they keep them they don't give up their social media accounts mm -hmm. they actually use them to share the truth and mm -hmm. I think we just find that I mean I, I think back to you just the catechism of the Catholic Church mm -hmm. there are such beautiful segments especially I think written on chastity mm -hmm. and just talking about how the the innate and fundamental call of every human is actually love and chastity is actually what orients us to live love and it's just, it's just so, so freeing. So, I mean, we're in a business. Yes, it's hard because it's countercultural, but we are selling a truth that every single human heart longs for, desires, needs, and wants. And we're finding that the young people, it, it's funny, I, I'm always still a little surprised how crazy things are out in the world. But then at the same time, I am overwhelmed by the openness and the receptivity of the youth to the truth. Mm. They want to believe in love. Yeah. They want to. And it's like you said, it's like we're hungry for it. Even if we don't realize that we are hungry for this truth. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it, that's why God, you know, God created us with that hunger, that desire for truth. And as you mentioned, you know, we are created for love and God is love. And the amen. fact that he's allowing us to participate in this, it's pretty amazing. You know, he didn't have to create us, but because love desires to give of itself, he wanted to bring us into existence. And he thought we were worth creating, that we're worth dying for. Um, and just as you said, too, I thought it was really powerful that, um, you know, we have the witness, of course, of religious, right, that consecrate mm -hmm. themselves to God. And that certainly is a witness. It points us to heaven. But also the fact that um, this is for the laity to, mm -hmm. you know, the mention that, yeah, this, this call to chastity is for everyone. And you're out there in the culture, and it's so powerful. Absolutely, and your work is integral to the pro-life movement that we want to celebrate today in the March for Life. Um, and speaking about the March for Life, of course, which is what we're celebrating today, Christina, would you be willing to share your own personal March for Life stories and your personal experiences with today's 
huge event. Well, sure. Um, so I actually grew up coming to the March for Life, like many families that are here today. And my parents uh, always from just really felt strongly about the cause of the pre-born and being a voice mm -hmm. for the voiceless. So they would pack up my siblings and I, and we would drive down to D.C. and be at the march year after year. And it was really, I think, um, an inspirational moment for me as a child and really, I think, was a for formational thing and just kind of showed me that it's important and we have an ability, we have a voice, and that we need to actually use it to, to do something. Um, it's actually funny. There's a picture I have back at home, um, and it's uh, with uh, my siblings. and. You know, one of them, I'm the oldest, so, you know, one was like crawling on the ground, another was like sitting there, and I'm like holding my sign <laughs> staunchly, like I was totally into it. Big sister. Big sister, yeah, yeah. Show, showing the way. <laughs> but um, really, it was just an opportunity to kind of really be inspired to do more and to know that we have an active role, actually, as citizens, too, to be participants and to, to stand up for what is right and to be present. So I, I grew up going to the march, and it was, um, I think, a really big thing for me and then it was something that I also did in my university days so mm -hmm. Penn State so mm -hmm. we brought Penn State students for life down and it was just kind of a a, a regular thing and um, it's amazing it's a good event to bring someone to introduce them to the pro-life movement really you know it's a really really great introductory event and I think by coming there's a power in realizing oh it's not just me yeah. it's not just cr crazy me or it's right. not just my group of friends or my family you right. see that you're plugged into something that's so much bigger than yourself it's, it's very powerful very very powerful which I think gives you the courage then to have those countercultural conversations that's right and just as the congresswoman mentioned in our last segment too, just the power of the invitation she was speaking about how mm -hmm. Vice President Pence was talking to President Trump um, earlier you know letting him know about the pro-life March he said how come I haven't heard about this mm -hmm. you know but just mm -hmm. sometimes just the personal invitation telling them about it it's amazing what the Lord can do through that it is. Um, now you mentioned earlier you know being from uh, Pennsylvania and that of course we had huge news just yesterday with the, um, um, the announcement of the new uh, Archbishop-elect of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about um, your interactions with Archbishop Chaput and also with the, the new one, if you had a connection there? Sure, well, I'd be delighted to. So yeah, yesterday was a very big day for the mm -hmm. Church um, the, of Philadelphia and for the Church of Cleveland as well, mm -hmm. a lot of movement. And um, I have to say, like many Philadelphia Catholics, I've been dreading the day that the Archbishop's uh, resignation would pro be received and he would go into retirement because um, Archbishop Chaput is just, he's a legend and I cannot say anything but many, many good things about him. He has just been an exemplary shepherd and bishop and I know that many people, he's a larger reach really, mm -hmm. not just in the U.S. church but I think in the church in the world and some of his writing and books. And I was uh, a fan of his before he came to Philadelphia but getting to work with him closely and he was a huge and has been a huge supporter of the culture project from day one he actually oh, helped gosh. launch us in those early days mm -hmm. and really um, just believed in me and the culture project and gave us all of the help and the support that he could give us a home at st charles borneo seminary in philadelphia so I, I got to know him a lot more personally and then also learned from him just just as a human being mm -hmm. um, i got to serve on his archdiocesan pastoral council for a couple of years and then actually as the chair for the last term so i got to work super closely with him and learned just the way he organizes himself and how he thinks and how he interacts with people it's um just impressive not only does he he's just consistent yeah. what he shares on that broad level he lives so personally yeah. he's just been an incredible shepherd in philadelphia and thank you so much for sharing that testimony with us that witness of faith that is so encouraging to hear that is in our church and with your work